How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, April 21st, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Tuesday, April 20th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Getting started, of course, with the NBA, because of course, the NBA season is coming to an end. Uh, looking at the primetime games from yesterday, starting off off in looking at the TNT games from yesterday starting off in New Orleans the New Orleans Pelicans hosted the Brooklyn Nets and in this matchup the Brooklyn Nets would beat the Pelicans 134 to 129 after outscoring the Pelicans by seven points in the second half for the Pelicans in this matchup their leading scorer would be their elite starting power forward out of Duke Zion Williamson who finished with 33 points seven rebounds and four assists in 35 minutes shooting 14 for 19 from the field and five for six from the foul line alongside him in the starting line in the starting lineup their elite starting small forward brandon ingram out of duke would finish with 27 points four rebounds and five assists in 32 minutes shooting 10 for 17 from the field two for five from three and five for six from the foul line for the brooklyn nets in this matchup their leading scorer would be their elite starting point guard out of duke kyrie irving who finished with 32 points two rebounds, eight assists, and five turnovers in 38 minutes, shooting 12 for 19 from the field, three for seven from three, and five for six from the foul line. Their starting small forward, Joe Harris, would finish with 24 points in 32 minutes, shooting 10 for 16 from the field, three for six from three, and one for two from the foul line. And off the bench for the Nets, their elite power forward, Blake Griffin, would finish with 16 points, eight rebounds, and three assists in 28 minutes as he fouled out in those 28 minutes. But in those 28 minutes, he would shoot six for 13 from the field, one for five from three, and a perfect three for three from the foul line. With this win, the Brooklyn Nets are now 39 and 19. That is the second best record in the Eastern Conference. They have now won six of their last 10 games. And in the playoff picture, they currently sit half a game behind the first place Philadelphia 76ers. And they also sit three and a half games ahead of the third place Milwaukee Bucks, just to show where they are in the conference. With this loss, the New Orleans Pelicans are now 25 and 33. That is the fifth worst record in the Western Conference. With this loss, they have now lost their last four games which is the worst or the second worst losing streak in the western conference at the moment they have now lost six of their last 10 games and at the moment they currently sit five games behind the eighth place memphis grizzlies outside of the western conference playoff picture and they currently sit 18 total games behind the first place utah jazz in the western conference Looking at the other primetime game of the night, jumping out to Portland, the Trailblazers hosted the Los Angeles Clippers. In this matchup, the Clippers would beat the Trailblazers 113 to 112. The big difference coming in the third quarter where they outscored the Trailblazers by eight, of course, to gain this lead and keep this momentum through the end of the game. For the Portland Trailblazers in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their starting small, their starting shooting guard, CJ McCollum, who finished with 25 points, five rebounds, five assists, and two steals in 36 minutes, shooting 11 for 26 from the field and three for four from the foul line. Alongside him in the starting lineup, their starting small forward from Toronto, Norman Powell, would finish with 23 points in 39 minutes, shooting 10 for 20 from the field. For the Los Angeles Clippers on the night, their leading scorer would be their elite starting shooting guard, Paul George, who finished with 33 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 steals in 37 minutes as he shot 13 for 22 from the field, 2 for 8 from 3, and 5 for 6 from the foul line. With this win, the Los Angeles Clippers are now 41-19. That is the third best record in the Western Conference. They've now won their last two games and nine of their last 10. In the Western Conference playoff picture, they now sit a game and a half behind the second place Phoenix Suns, and they now sit two and a half games ahead of the fourth place Denver Nuggets. And overall, they trail the first place Utah Jazz by three games in the Western Conference. As now with this win, it is impossible for the Clippers to have a losing record this year. They are the third team in the NBA to hit the 41 win um, mark uh, this season. Look at him with his loss. The Portland Trailblazers are now 32 and 25. That is the sixth best record in the Western Conference. With this loss, they've now lost their last two games and seven of their last 10. In the Western Conference playoff pitch, they now sit two and a half games behind the fifth place defending champs, Los Angeles Lakers. And they currently sit a game and a half ahead of the seventh place Dallas Mavericks as they sit 10 and a half games behind the first place Utah Jazz. 
just to show what the Western Conference is looking like. Outside of the primetime matchups, jumping to New York, the New York Knicks hosted the Charlotte Hornets and were able to pull off a 109-97 win after they went on to outscore the Hornets by 18 points in the second half. For the Hornets in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their power forward off the bench, P.J. Washington, who finished with 26 points in 35 minutes, shooting 10 for 18 from the field and 6 for 10 from 3. Their leading scorer amongst the starters would be their starting shooting guard, Terry Rozier, who finished with 21 points, 7 rebounds, and 8 assists in 39 minutes, shooting 8 for 17 from the field, 4 for 9 from 3, and 1 for 2 from the foul line. For the New York Knicks in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard out of Duke, R.J. Barrett, who finished with 24 points in 40 minutes, shooting 8 for 17 from the field, uh, 6 for 11 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. Also in the starting lineup for the Knicks, their all-star power forward, Julius Randle, would finish with 16 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals in 40 minutes, as he shot 5 for 16 from the field, 1 for 6 from 3, and 5 for 6 from the foul line. Uh, with this win, the New York Knicks are now 32-27. and 27. That is the fifth best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won their last seven games. That is currently the best winning streak in the Eastern Conference at the moment. And that is also the, or, and, and, and it's the best winning streak in the NBA at the moment. They've won eight of their last 10 games. In the Eastern Conference playoff picture, they now sit half a game behind the fourth place Atlanta Hawks. And they sit half a game ahead of the sixth place Boston Celtics. Overall, they trailed the Philadelphia 76ers by eight total games in the Eastern Conference. With this loss, the Charlotte Hornets are now 28-29. and That is the eighth best record in the Eastern Conference. With this loss, they've now lost six of their last 10 games. And in the Eastern Conference playoff picture, they now sit a game and a half behind the seventh place Miami Heat as they sit two games ahead of the ninth place Indiana Pacers who are on the outside looking in. And overall, they now trail the Philadelphia 76ers by 11 total games games in the conference. Jumping out to Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks hosted their division rivals, the Orlando Magic. And in this matchup, the Hawks were able to beat the Magic 112 to 96, winning by 16. The differences would come in the second and fourth quarter. They outscored Orlando by 14 in the second and by eight in the fourth. For the Magic in this matchup, they had two players tied for the team high in scoring. Their center out of Duke, Wendell Carter Jr., would finish with 17 points, nine rebounds, and three steals in 26 minutes shooting six for eight from the field, one for two from three, and four for six from the foul line. Alongside him in the starting lineup, their starting point guard, Cole Anthony, would finish with 17 points, five rebounds, eight assists, and two steals in 31 minutes, shooting six for 15 from the field and four for five from the foul line. Good game for the rookie. For the Atlanta Hawks in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their elite starting point guard out of Oklahoma, Trey Young, who finished with 25 points, five rebounds, and seven assists alongside five turnovers in 32 minutes as he shot seven for 16 from the field, two for five from three and nine for 10 from the foul line. And then off the bench, their, their, their guard, Lemon Pepper Lou, would finish with 22 points in 24 minutes, shooting six for 14 from the field and eight for nine from the foul line. With this win, the Atlanta Hawks are now 32 and 26. That is the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won their last two games in eight of their last 10. In the Eastern Conference playoff picture, they now sit three and a half games behind the third place Milwaukee Bucks, and they sit half a game ahead of the fifth place New York Knicks. Overall, they trail the first place Philadelphia 76ers by seven and a half games in the conference. With this loss, the Orlando Magic are now 18 and 40. They are tied with the Detroit Pistons for the worst record in the Eastern Conference as they have now lost their last three games and lost nine of their last 10. They currently sit 10 and a half games outside of the Eastern Conference playoff picture behind the eighth place Charlotte Hornets. And they currently trail the Philadelphia 76ers by 21 and a half games in the Eastern Conference just to show where they sit. Uh, and then last but not least, jumping out to Sacramento, the Sacramento Kings hosted the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, who went into this game holding the worst record in the NBA. 
And in this matchup, the Minnesota Timberwolves would end up beating the Sacramento Kings 134 to 120. It was a 14 point win. And the big difference would come in the fourth quarter where they outscored the Kings by 18 to come from behind and pick up their 16th win of the season. For the Sacramento Kings, their leading scores would be their starting small forwards. Um, first, their, their forward out of UNC, Harrison Barnes, would finish with 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists in 39 minutes, shooting 6 for 11 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3, and a perfect 6 for 6 from the foul line. And alongside him in the starting lineup, their, starting, their other starting forward, Mo Harkless, would finish with 20 points, 7 rebounds, and a couple of steals in 29 minutes, shooting 7 for 12 from the field, 3 for 4 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the foul line. For the Minnesota Timberwolves in this matchup, their lead, they had two players that tied for the team high, which was 28 points. Off the bench, their elite point guard, D'Angelo Russell, would finish with 28 points, 3 rebounds, and 6 assists in 25 minutes, shooting 10 for 13 from the field, 6 for 8 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. In the starting lineup, their number one overall pick from the 2020 NBA draft, Anthony Edwards, would finish with 28 points and 3 steals in 38 minutes, shooting 11 for 21 from the field, five for 12 from from three and he made his only free throw of the night so he was one for one alongside him in the starting lineup their elite starting center carl anthony towns out of kentucky would finish with 26 points 18 rebounds five assists and four blocks in 36 minutes shooting nine for 17 from the field four for nine from three and four for six from the foul line with this win, the Minnesota Timberwolves are now 16-43. and 43. That is the second worst record in the Western Conference and the second worst record in the NBA. With this win, they've now won four of their last 10 games. They currently sit 14 and a half games behind the eighth place Memphis Grizzlies outside of the Western Conference playoff picture. And they now sit 27 and a half games behind the Utah Jazz in the conference. With this loss, the Sacramento Kings are now 23 and 35. That is the fourth worst record in the Western Conference as they have lost nine of their last 10 games. Um, they currently sit seven games behind the eighth place Memphis Grizzlies outside of the Western Conference playoff picture. And they currently sit 20 games behind the first place Utah Jazz just to show where the Sacramento Kings are. That is what the NBA is looking like following yesterday's games leading into today, Wednesday the 21st. Starting off with the primetime game, at 7 o'clock, the Philadelphia 76ers, the holders of the Eastern Conference's best record, are going to host the Phoenix Suns, the holders of the Western Conference's second best record. Um, that game will be on NBA TV. And then right after that, at 10 o'clock on NBA TV, the third seed in the West, the Los Angeles Clippers, are going to host the Memphis Grizzlies, who currently hold the eighth best record in the conference. That game will be on ESPN TV, as both these teams have a lot to fight for. Outside of the primetime matchups, at 7 o'clock, o'clock the Cleveland Cavaliers will host the Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers will host the Oklahoma City Thunder also at the same time the Washington Wizards will host the Golden State Warriors as Russell Westbrook and Stephen Curry face off against each other and the Toronto Raptors will host the Brooklyn Nets at the same time at seven o'clock at seven or at, at, at eight o'clock the New York Knicks will host the Atlanta Hawks in Madison Square Garden and the Houston Rockets will host the Utah Jazz the Rockets currently holding the worst record in the NBA the Jazz holding holding the best. At 8.30, the Dallas Mavericks will host the Detroit Pistons and the San Antonio Spurs will host the Miami Heat and jump into the last time frame uh, when, when the, the last games are starting at 10 o'clock. The Portland Trailblazers will host the Denver Nuggets and the Sacramento Kings will host the Minnesota Timberwolves. That is what the NBA is looking like leading up until today. Uh, look, Staying within the arena, but taking the context to the ice, taking a good look at what's going on in the NHL. And of course, disclosure, every team has to stay Stay within their own division to limit traveling because of uh, uh, to limit traveling, especially with the pandemic going on. Starting off with the games that took place north of the border, the only game that took place north of the border um, was in Vancouver as the Canucks hosted the Toronto Maple Leafs. And in this game, the Canucks would beat the Maple Leafs six to three after scoring four goals in the third period with their 18th win of the season. The Vancouver Canucks are currently holding on to the second worst record in the North Division. 
um, as the Vancouver Canucks currently trail the Toronto Maple Leafs by 22 total points in the table with seven less games played. Uh, looking out to what's going on in the States, jumping out to Buffalo, the Buffalo Sabres host of the Boston Bruins. The Bruins were able to blank the Sabres, holding them scoreless, winning this game two to nothing. With their 26th win of the season, the Boston Bruins now hold the fourth best record in the East Division as they now trail the Capitals and the Islanders by four points. Speaking of the Islanders, the Islanders hosted the New York Rangers and were able to pull off a six to one win. Their left winger, Bouvier, would finish with three assists along with his goal. And with their 29th win of the season, the Islanders are now tied at the top of the East Division with the Washington Capitals as they both sit one point over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Speaking of the Penguins, the Penguins hosted the New Jersey Devils and were able to pull off a 7-6 win in the third period as the Devils scored all six of their goals in the third. It wouldn't be enough to beat the Penguins and with their 29th win of the season, the Penguins now hold the third best record in the East as they now sit one point in the table behind the Washington Capitals and the New York Islanders at the moment. Jumping out to see what's going on in the Central Division, I uh, a, a matchup between two top teams within took place in Tampa Bay as the Lightning hosted the Carolina Hurricanes. And in this matchup, the Hurricanes would beat the Lightning 4-1 to one to pick up their third win of the season. With this win, the Carolina Hurricanes are tied with the Florida Panthers for the best record in the Central Division as they both sit three points over the Tampa Bay Lightning following this matchup. Speaking of the Florida Panthers, the Panthers hosted the Columbus Blue Jackets and were able to pull up a 5-1 to one win at home, picking up their 30th win of the season. With this win, they are tied with the Hurricanes for the best record as they they both sit two or, or they both sit three points ahead of the Tampa Bay Lightning at the moment. And then jumping out to Dallas, the Dallas Stars hosted the Detroit Red Wings and were able to pull up a 5-2 to two win at home to pick up their 19th win of the season. With this win, the Dallas Stars now hold the fifth best record in the Central Division as they now trail the Hurricanes and the Panthers by 15 games in the division. And then last but not least, jumping to see what's going out going on out west. Uh, the only matchup that took on that 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 was that happened in the Western Division took place in the Staples Center as the Los Angeles Kings hosted the Anaheim Ducks and were able to pull off the home win, winning four to, winning four to one to pick up their seventeenth win of the season. With this win, the Los Angeles Kings hold the second worst record in the West Division as they now trail the Las Vegas Golden Knights by twenty six whole games in the division. Right now, that is what the NHL is looking like following yesterday's matchups, looking to see what's going on today, starting off with the prime times. At 7 o'clock, the Chicago Blackhawks will host the Nashville Predators on NBC Sports Network. And then at 9.30, same networks, uh, the Las Vegas Golden Knights will host the San Jose Sharks. Outside of the primetime games at 9 o'clock, the Arizona Coyotes will host the Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers will host the Montreal Canadiens. And that is virtually what the sport of hockey is looking like as we get into today's matchups. Jump in to see what's going on in the MLB as the MLB is uh, as the MLB came off of one of its matchups. Looking at one of the matchups that's still technically in play, the Arizona or the Cincinnati Reds are hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Arizona Diamondbacks right now are winning five to four. Looks as though they're going to win. Uh, but looking for looking into the other matchups from yesterday. The Seattle Mariners hosted the Los Angeles Dodgers, and in this matchup, the defending champs were able to get the only run of the game, scoring in the third inning off of a Corey Seager RBI single to pick up their 14th win of the season. For the Seattle Mariners, the current holders of the best record in the American League West, the start and the loss would go to Marco Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez would end up allowing one earned run and two hits in seven innings pitch as he struck out six batters on the day. With this loss, Marco Gonzalez is now one and two as a starting pitcher in the American League or a starting pitcher for the Seattle Mariners. And in the lineup, the only player that logged a hit for Seattle was Mitch Hanniger as he went one for four as the Mariners were held to only one hit all day. The start and the win for Los Angeles would go to their, would go to Julio Urias, who allowed only one hit in no earned runs in seven innings pitched as he struck out 11 batters on the day. And the save would go to Kenley Jansen, who would allow no earned runs in the one inning that he pitched as he struck out two batters. He now has four saves on the season. And for the Dodgers, they only had two hits as a 
team. Corey Seager, their elite shortstop, would go one for four with an RBI. And then A.J. Pollock would be go one for three as he, only, he had the only run of the day for the Dodgers. With this win, the Los Angeles Dodgers are now 14-4. and four. That is the best record in the entire MLB. And then the NL West, they currently sit two and a half games ahead of the second place San Francisco Giants at the moment. With this loss, the Seattle Mariners are now 11-7. and seven. They are tied with the Oakland Athletics for the best record in the American League West. Um, as they currently sit half a game ahead of the third place Los Angeles Angels. As they've won seven of their last ten games. Uh, jumping out to Cleveland, the Cleveland Indians hosted the Chicago White Sox, and in this matchup, the White Sox were able to beat the Indians 8-5, to um, giving Carlos Rodon his third win of the season. For the Cleveland Indians, the start and the loss would end up going to Zach Plezak, who allowed six earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out four batters on the day. With this loss, Zach Plezak is now 1-3 and three as a starting pitcher for Cleveland. In their lineup, their center fielder Jordan Luplo would go 1-2 for two with an RBI in two runs as he had as he hit his fifth home run of the season yesterday and he walked three times uh their elite third baseman jose ramirez would go 0 for 4 as he walked once their designated hitter framil reyes would go three for four as he finished with an rbi and a run himself and for chicago the start and the win would go to carlos rodon who would allow one earned run and two total runs and five innings pitch as he struck out eight on the day with this win, Carlos Rodon is now 3-0, and and the save would end up going to their elite closer, Liam Hendricks, as he would allow no hits, no runs, in the po- and he only logged one out, but of course it was the out that the White Sox needed. In their lineup, their elite shortstop, Tim Anderson, would go 1-5 for five with an RBI and a run as he had his third home run of the season. Their elite designated hitter, reigning American League MVP, Jose Abreu, would go 3-4 for four with three RBIs and three runs as he had two home runs yesterday. He now has four four on the season and then their center fielder Luis Robert will go three for four with a run on the day with this win these Chicago White Sox are now nine and nine that is the second best record in the American League Central as they now sit a game behind the Kansas City Royals and with this loss the Cleveland Indians are now eight and eight as they now hold the third best record in the AL Central as they also sit a game behind the Kansas City Royals at the moment in the division jumping out to Oakland the Oakland Athletics hosted the Minnesota Twins and they were able to pull off a seven to nothing win at home uh, to pick up their 10th win in a row, which is, of course, amazing for the Oakland A's at the moment, picking up or the, the, as they faced off against the Minnesota Twins in a doubleheader. In the first one, they won 7 to nothing as Manea picked up the win. In this particular matchup for the Minnesota Twins, the start and the loss would go to Matt Shoemaker, who allowed five earned runs and 3.1 innings pitch as he was an unable to strike out a single batter on the day. With this loss, Matt Shoemaker is now 1-1 one one as a starting pitcher for Minnesota. And the only player who was able to log more than one hit for the Twins was Williams Astudillo, uh, their second baseman who went two for three on the day. And then also for them, their elite designated hitter, Nelson Cruz, would go 0 for 3 as he struck out. For the Oakland A's in the first matchup, the complete game win would go to Sean Manea, who allowed no earned runs and six hits and seven innings pitch as he struck out seven batters on the day. With this win, Manea is now 2-1 and one as a starting pitcher for Oakland. The only player to log more than one hit for the team would be their designated hitter, Mitch Moreland, who went 2-3 for three with three RBIs and two runs as he hit two home runs for himself. He his first two of the season and alongside him their first baseman Matt Olson will go one for four with four RBIs and a run as he will go on to hit a grand slam in the bottom of the fourth to give the athletics their seven runs of the game and alongside him in the lineup their elite third baseman Matt Chapman will go 0 for one as he walked twice and he struck out once with this, this this would carry the momentum into their second game where they would beat the Twins one to nothing. The only run coming in the fourth inning off of a Seth Brown RBI single. For the Minnesota Twins in this matchup, the start and the loss would go to Jose Barrios, who would allow one earned run and four hits in five innings pitch as he struck out five on the day. With this loss, Barrios is now two and two as a starting pitcher. 
and no one on the Twins was able to log more than one hit. Their elite designated hitter, Nelson Cruz, would go 0 for 2 on the day. Uh, for the Oakland Athletics, the win would end up going to Jesus Lazardo, who would allow no earned runs and only two hits in 5.1 innings pitch as he struck out six batters on the day. With this win, Jesus Lazardo is now 1-1 one one as a starting pitcher for the A's. The only player for the A's to log more than one hit would be Seth Brown, their right fielder. He went 2-2 two for two on the day as he finished with an RBI. And their elite third baseman, Matt Chapman, would go 0-3 for three as he struck out in the second game as well. With both of these wins, the Oakland A's are now 11-7. and seven. They are tied with the Seattle Mariners for the best record in the American League West as they have now won their last 10 games as a team. Considering this is one of the teams that started out 0-6, this is a... I mean, the Oakland Athletics are the hottest team in baseball at the very moment. Um... And with this, and with both of these losses, the Minnesota Twins are now six and ten. They are tied with the Detroit Tigers with the worst record in the AL Central, as they now trail the Kansas City Royals by three games in the division. Jumping out to New York, the New York Yankees hosted the Atlanta Braves and were able to pull off a three to one win thanks to their two run eighth inning. Uh, thanks to uh, some bad pitching from Atlanta and the New York Yankees would be able to capitalize in the batter box to pick up their sixth win of the season. For the Atlanta Braves, the start would go to Charlie Morton, who allowed one earned run and three hits and six innings pitch as he struck out six batters on the day. The loss for the Braves will come in relief will come to Tyler Matzik, who allowed two earned runs and was unable to log a single out while he was playing. He's now 0-2 as a relief pitcher. In the lineup for Atlanta, their elite first baseman and reigning National League MVP Freddie Freeman would go one for four as he struck out once. Marcelo Zuna, the only National League player to win designated hitter of the year, would go 0 for three as he struck out once. And then their elite second baseman, Ozzy Albies, would go 0 for three as he walked and struck out on the day. And at center field, their or as center fielder Guillermo Heredia will go two for four with a run on the day for Atlanta. For the New York Yankees, the start would end up going to their starting pitcher, Jamison Dion, who would allow only one earned run and four hits and five innings pitch as he struck out five. He would not get the decision, but the decision would go to their relief pitcher, Jonathan Loais. Wait, Loisiga. Loisiga? 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 Um, who would allow no one runs in the one inning that he pitched. And with this win, he is now 2-0 and in relief. Our oldest Chapman would pick up his second save for the Yankees on the season. And with and looking at how they fared in the lineup, their elite first their elite second baseman, DJ LeMay, he will go two for four with a run. Their elite right fielder, Aaron Judge, will go one for three. Their elite designated hitter, John Carlos Ten, will go 0 for two as he struck out twice and also walked twice. Their elite shortstop, Glaber Torres, will go 0 for four on the day. And then their third baseman, Gio Urshela, will go two for three with an RBI and a run as his home run in the fifth inning would actually, was actually the, the run that tied the game for New York. With this win, the Yankees are now 6-10. and ten. That is the worst record in the AL East as they currently trail the Boston Red Sox by five games in the division. With this loss, the Atlanta Braves are 7-10. and ten. That is the fourth best record in the NL East and they currently sit two and a half games behind the first place New York Mets in their division. Uh, jumping out to Miami, the Miami Marlins hosted the Baltimore Orioles. In this matchup, the Orioles would score would end up beating the Marlins seven to five, scoring six of their seven runs in the first four innings. For the Miami Marlins in this matchup, the start and the loss would go to their starting pitcher Nick Neidert, who would allow five earned runs and three innings pitch as he struck out two batters on the day. With this loss, Neidert is now zero and one as a starting pitcher for Miami, and in their lineup, their shortstop Miguel. Rojas would go four for four with an RBI and two runs. Um, and also for the Marlins, their pinch hitter, Chad Wallach, would go two for two with a run on the day. For the Baltimore Orioles, the win, the start and the win would go to Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey would allow three earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out four batters on the day. With this win, Matt Harvey is now one and one as a starting pitcher. And the save for the Orioles would go to Cesar Valdez, his fourth of the season, as he struck out three of the four batters that he faced. Um, and then for, or for Baltimore in their lineup, 
their first baseman Trey Mancini would end up going two for two or two for four with an RBI and two runs as he had his fourth home run of the season. And then their shortstop Freddie Galvis would go two for three with two RBIs and a run as Galvis hit his second home run of the season. With this win, the Baltimore Orioles are now 8-9. and nine. That is the third best record in the American League East as they trailed the Boston Red Sox by three and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Miami Marlins are now 7-9. That is the third best record in the National League East as they now trail the New York Mets by two games in the division. Jumping out to Washington, D.C., the Washington Nationals hosted the St. Louis Cardinals and were able to pull off a 3-2 win. Um, after coming from behind in the eighth inning off of a Trey Turner RBI single to tie and then a Jan Gomes walk to give them um, a big win at home. For the St. Louis Cardinals in this matchup, the start will go to Adam Wainwright, who allowed only one earned run and five hits and seven innings pitch as he struck out 10 batters on the day. The blown save in the loss would be tied to Giovanni Gallegos, who would go on to allow two earned runs and point two innings pitched as he walked three batters and struck out one. With this loss, Gallegos is now 2-1 and one as a relief pitcher for St. Louis. In their lineup, their elite first baseman Paul Goldschmidt will go 0-4 as he struck out twice. Their elite third baseman Nolan Arenado will go 1-4 for four on the day. Their future Hall of Fame catcher Yadier Molina will go 2-3 for three with a walk and a run on the day for himself. And for Washington, the start will go to Patrick Corbin as Corbin allowed no earned runs and four hits and six innings pitch as he struck out five. The win would come in relief to Dakota Hudson or Daniel Hudson, I'm sorry. Daniel Hudson would allow no hits or no earned runs in the one inning that he pitches. He struck out a batter. With this loss, he is now 2-0 as a relief pitcher. And the save will go to Brad Hand as Brad Hand only allowed one hit in the last inning. Brad Hand's second save of the day. The only player for the Nationals to finish with more than one hit would be their shortstop, Trey Turner, who went two for four with an RBI on the day. And with this win, the Washington Nationals are now six and nine. That is the worst record in the National League East as they currently trail the first place New York Mets by two and a half games in the division. With this loss, the St. Louis Cardinals are now eight and nine. That is the third best record in the National League Central as they now trail the Cincinnati Reds and the Milwaukee Brewers by two whole games in the division. Jumping out to Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Phillies hosted the San Francisco Giants, and the Giants were able to pull off a 10-7 win after scoring all 10 of their runs after the fourth inning. Uh, for the Phillies in this matchup, the start will go to Zach Wheeler, who allowed four earned runs in his 5.2 innings pitch as he struck out six batters on the day. The loss would go to their relief pitcher, um, Connor Brogdon, who would allow six earned runs in the .2 innings that he pitched. Um, as he was unable to strike out a batter. With this loss, he is now 3-1 and one as a relief pitcher for Philadelphia. Uh, in their lineup, their elite right fielder, Bryce Harper, would go 2-3 for three with two runs on the day as he also walked twice on the day. Their first baseman, Brad Miller, would end up going 1-4 for four with three RBIs and a run as he hit his first home run of the season. And then for the San Francisco Giants, the start would end up going to their starting pitcher, Logan Webb. Logan Webb would allow four earned runs and four innings pitches. He struck out four batters. The win would actually come in relief for San Francisco as Jose Alvarez would allow no earned runs, no hits in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. With this win, Alvarez is now 1-1 one and one as a relief pitcher for San Francisco. In their lineup, their right fielder, Mike Yastrzemski, will go 2-4 for four on the day. Their catcher, future Hall of Fame catcher, former and National League MVP, Buster Posey, would go 3-4 for four with two RBIs and three runs. As he hit two home runs on the day, he now has four on the season. Um, and then their shortstop, Brandon Crawford, will go two for four on the day for himself. With this win, the San Francisco Giants are now 11-6. and six. That is the second best record in the National League West as they now trail the defending champs, Los Angeles Dodgers, by two and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Philadelphia Phillies are now 8-9. and nine. That is the second best record in the National League East as they now trail the New York Mets by one and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Fenway, the Boston Red Sox hosted the Toronto Blue Jays and were able to pull away with a 4-2 win at home, scoring all four of their runs in the fourth inning of this matchup. Um, of course, all of, coming from a Xander Bogarts three-run home run and a Bobby Dalbeck RBI triple. For the Toronto Blue Jays in this matchup, the start and the loss will go to their elite starting pitcher, Hyunjin Ryu, 
who allowed four earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out two batters on the day. With this loss, Ryu is now 1-2 and two as a starting pitcher for Toronto. In their lineup, their shortstop, Bo Bichette, will go 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run as he had his fifth home run of the season yesterday. Their elite first baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., will go 0-3 as he walked. And then their center fielder, their center fielder Randall Grichik, will go 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run as Grichik hit his second home run of the season as well. Both of their both of the Blue Jays' runs will come off of um, solo home runs. And for the Boston Red Sox in this matchup, the win would the start and the win would go to Eduardo Rodriguez, who allowed two earned runs and six innings pitch as he struck out six batters on the day. With this win, Rodriguez is three and zero as a starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, and the save would end up going to Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes would allow only one hit in the inning that he pitched as he struck out a batter. With this save, that is his third of the season. And then in the lineup for the Red Sox, their second baseman, Christian Arroyo, will go three for four with an art with a run on the day. Their elite left fielder, JD Martinez, will go one for four with the run as he struck out. Their shortstop, Xander Bogarts, will go two for four with three RBIs and a run for himself as he had his first home run of the season. And then their first baseman, Bobby Dalbeck, will go two for three with a run for himself. With this win, the Boston Red Sox are now twelve and six. That is the best record in the American League and especially in the American League East and definitely the the American League. And with this win, they now sit two games over the second place Tampa Bay Rays in the division. With this loss, the Toronto Blue Jays are now seven and ten. That is the fourth best record in the AL East as they now trail the Boston Red Sox by four and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Chicago, the Chicago Cubs hosted the New York Mets and were able to pull off a three to one win. Um, to a, a big and what was a pretty good pitching performance at home for the New York Mets in this matchup. The start will go to Taiwan Walker, who had allowed two earned runs and three point two innings pitch as he walked six and struck out seven. With this loss, Taiwan Walker is now zero and one as a starting pitcher for the Mets. In their lineup, their elite shortstop Francisco Lindor will go zero for four as he walked once. Their left fielder Dominic Smith will go two for four. Their elite first baseman Pete Alonso will go zero for four as he struck out once for himself. And their third baseman J.D. Davis would go two for three with an RBI and a run as J.D. Davis hit his first home run of the season for the Mets, the only run of the day for the team. For the Chicago Cubs, the start in the win would go to Jake Arrieta, who allowed one earned run and three hits and five innings pitch as he struck out four on the day. With this win, Jake Arrieta is now three and zero as a starting three and one as a starting pitcher this season. And the save will go to their elite closer Craig Kimbrell, who allowed only one hit and struck out two batters and one inning pitch. He also walked two. Um, he picked up his fourth save of the season. And in the lineup for Chicago, their elite third baseman Chris Bryant would go one for four. And then the big performer for them would end up being their second baseman, Eric Sogard, who will go two for three with an RBI and two runs on the day. With this win, the Chicago Cubs are now seven and nine. That is the their tie with the Pittsburgh Pirates for the worst record in the National League Central as they now trail the Cincinnati Reds and the Milwaukee Brewers by two and a half games in the division. And with this loss, the New York Mets are now seven and five. That is still the best record in the National League East as they now sit a game and a half ahead of the second place Philadelphia Phillies. Jumping out to Kansas City, the Kansas City Royals hosted the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Rays were able to pull off a 14-7 win as they were able to get 17 hits in one game to pull off their 10th win of the season. For the Kansas City Royals, the start and the loss will go to Brad Keller, who allowed five earned runs in the 1.2 innings that he pitched as he struck out one batter on the day. The Kansas City Royals will combine to throw out eight total pitchers on the day it was a it was mostly a relief game and they were in, in all of their pit most of their pitchers really were getting destroyed for the most part uh in their lineup for kansas city their elite second fielder Whit merrifield would go two for five with an rbi and a run their first baseman carlos santana would go two for four with three rbis and a run as santana hit his third home run of the season their elite catcher salvador perez would go 0 for four as he went on to walk for the day and then their shortstop, Nicky Lopez, would go two for four with two RBIs and two runs on the, on the day. And then for Tampa Bay, the start would go to Rich Hill, who would only pitch two innings. He allowed four runs in those two innings. The win would come in relief to um, Andrew Kittredge, who would allow no runs, no hits in the inning that he pitched with this win or with this, yeah, with this win. Kittredge is now three and zero on the season for Tampa Bay. 
as a relief pitcher in their lineup. Their designated hitter, Austin Meadows, would end up going three for five with two RBIs and two runs on the day as he had his fourth home run of the season. Their elite left fielder, Randy Arosarena, will go three for six with a run on the day for himself. Their third baseman, Joey Wendell, will go three for six with an RBI and two runs. Their second baseman, Brandon Lau, will go two for five with two RBIs and two runs as he had his second home run of the season. Manuel Margot, their right fielder, went one for four with three RBIs and a run for the day. Their first baseman, Yoshi Satsugo, would go one for four with three RBIs for himself. Um, their, and their shortstop, Willie Adames, would go two for five with an RBI and a run for himself. Uh, their catcher, Mike Zanino, would go one for four with two RBIs and two runs as he walked once as well as he would go on to hit his third home run of the season. With this win, the Tampa Bay Rays are now 10-8. and eight. That is the second best record in the American League East as they now trail the Red Sox by two in the two games in the division. With this loss, the Kansas City Royals are 9-7. and seven. That is still the best record in the American League Central as they now sit a game ahead of the Chicago White Sox and the Cleveland Indians at the moment. Jumping out to Colorado, out to Denver, the Colorado Rockies hosted the Houston Astros and were able to pull off a 6-2 to two win after scoring all six of their runs in, this, in, in their last three innings that they were batting. For the Houston Astros in this matchup, the start and the loss would go to Luis Garcia. Luis Garcia would allow two earned runs in the 5.2 innings that he pitched as he struck out six batters on the day. With this loss, he is now 0-1-1 as a starting pitcher for Houston. In their lineup, their left fielder, Michael Brantley, would go 3-for-3 three three with a run on the day. Um, he was the only player to log more than one hit as their elite third baseman, Alex Bregman, would go 0-4 for four as he struck out once. And then looking at the how Colorado fared, the win would go to their starting pitcher, John Gray. John Gray would allow one earned run in the 6.2 innings that he pitch as he struck out six batters on the day with this win John Gray is now two and one as a starting pitcher for Colorado um, in their lineup their elite right fielder Charlie Blackman will go 0 for 2 as he walked once and scored twice and then their first baseman CJ Crone will go two for four with five RBIs and a run as Crone would hit his first home run of the season yesterday with this win, the Colorado Rockies are now 5-12. and That is the worst record in the National League West. They now trail the defending champs, Los Angeles Dodgers, by eight and a half games in the division. And with this loss, the Houston Astros are now 7-9. and That is the worst record in the American League West, as they now trail the Oakland Athletics and the Seattle Mariners by three total games in the division. Jumping out to Anaheim, the Los Angeles Angels hosted the Texas Rangers and were able to pull off a 6-2 win, scoring three of their runs in the seventh inning um, off of an Albert Pujols, off of Albert Pujols and Kurt Suzuki home runs. For the Texas Rangers in this matchup, the start and the loss would end up going to their starting pitcher, Jordan Lyles. Jordan Lyles would allow three earned runs and six innings pitch as he struck out five batters on the day. With this loss, Jordan Lyles is now 1-1 one and one for the Texas Rangers. The only player to log more than one hit for the Rangers would be their shortstop, Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, who went 2-5 for, for five with a run on the day. And for the Los Angeles Angels, the start would go to Shohei Otani, who would allow no earned runs and only one hit in four innings pitch as he walked six batters and struck out seven. He wouldn't get the decision, but the win would go to their relief pitcher, Griffin Canning, in this instance. Canning would allow two earned runs in the 2.1 innings that he pitched as he struck out two batters. With this win, Canning is now 1-1 one one on the season for the Angels. In their lineup, their goaded center fielder, Mike Trout, would go 3-4 for four with an RBI and two runs as Mike Trout hit his fifth home run of the season um, and then their their designated hitter future hall of famer albert pujols would go one for four with an rbi and a run as he had his second home run of the season and then kurt suzuki would go one for three with two rbis and a run as he had his first home run of the season yesterday too with this win the los angeles angels are now nine and six that is the third best record in the american league west as they now sit half a game behind the oakland athletics and the seattle mariners with this loss, the Texas Rangers are now 8-10. and 10. That is the fourth best record in the American League West. And they currently trail the Oakland Athletics and Seattle Mariners by three games in the division at the moment. Last but not least, jumping out to San Diego, the San Diego Padres hosted the Milwaukee Brewers. And the Brewers were able to beat the San Diego Padres 6 to nothing. of course, behind Corbin Burns, holding one of the best offensive teams, San Diego, to scoreless into only six hits on the day. 
for the Padres, the start and the win would go, or the start and the loss would go to Chris Paddock, who allowed one earned run and, and five total runs and five uh, innings pitched as he struck out seven batters on the day. With this loss, he is now one and two on the season for San Diego. And then in the lineup, nobody was able to log more than one hit for the team. For the Milwaukee Brewers in this matchup, the start and the win would go to Corbin Burns, who allowed no earned runs and only four hits and six innings pitch as he struck out 10 batters on the day. With this win, Corbin Burns is now 2-1 as a starting pitcher for Milwaukee. In their lineup, their first baseman, Daniel Vogelbach, will go 2-4 for four with a run on the day. Uh, their third baseman, Travis Shaw, will go 1-4 for four with two RBIs and a run at third base. And then their catcher, Omar Narvarez, will go 3-4 for four with two RBIs on the day. And with this win, the Milwaukee Brewers are now 10-7 and seven on the season. They currently hold the second-best record in the National League Central as they are standing right about even with the Cincinnati Reds in the NL Central playoff picture as they both sit two games ahead of the third-place St. Louis Cardinals. And then with this loss, the San Diego Padres are now 10-9. and nine. That is the third-best record in the National League West as they now trail the defending Major League champs Los Angeles Dodgers by four and a half games in the National League West just to show what that looks like. Those are all of so that is what the MLB is looking like following yesterday's matchups. Of course, looking out to what's going on today, starting with the primetime matchups that everyone should uh, should of course be looking out to, looking forward to. Um, starting at one or, or rather, starting with the primetime games at six ten, the Cleveland Indians are going to host the Chicago White Sox on ESPN Plus. Aaron Savali starting three and zero for the Cleveland Indians looks to get his fourth win of the season. And outside of that game, every game, every other game is on. Um, or outside of that, every other game will be resuming today. Starting at 105, the Philadelphia Phillies will host the San Francisco Giants as Anthony Disclafini is looking to, and Zach Eflin are both looking to pick up their second wins of the season. At 110, the Miami Marlins will host the Baltimore Orioles as Trevor Rogers faces off against Bruce Zimmerman. At 210, Michael Fulmer and the Detroit Tigers are going to host Tyler Anderson and the Pittsburgh Pirates for game one of their doubleheader. At 310, the Colorado Rockies will host the Houston Astros led by Austin Gomber and Hugh Jose Urquidy at 310. At 337, Frankie Montaz and the Oakland A's are going to host Kenta Maeda and the Minnesota Twins. At 405, goaded Max Scherzer and the Washington Nationals are going to host Carlos Martinez and the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, at 407, Jose Quintana and the Los Angeles Anders are going to host Mike fulton and the Texas Rangers. At 410, Denelson Lamette will make his debut for the San Diego Padres as he faces off against Adrian Hauser and the Milwaukee Brewers. At 510, it, the Cincinnati Reds and Arizona Diamondbacks game will continue as that game is currently suspended. That game will continue. It will resume at 510 today. Uh, at 6. 30, the New York Yankees, led by their elite starting pitcher Corey Kluber, will face off against the Atlanta Braves, led by Ian Anderson. That game will be on ESPN. That is the main primetime game of the night that a lot of people are going to take notice to. At 6.40, the Cincinnati Reds, the holders of the best record in the NL Central, are going to host the Arizona Diamondbacks. At the same time, it'll the second doubleheader for the Detroit Tigers and the Pittsburgh Pirates should start as Spencer Turnbull looks to get his first win for Detroit. At 7.10, the Boston Red Sox, the current holders of the best record in the American League, will host the Toronto Blue Jays at 7.10. At 7.40, uh, the Chicago Cubs, led by Zach Davies, will host the New York Mets, led by David Peterson, as the Mets currently hold the best record in the NL East. At 8-10, the Kansas City Royals, led by Jacob Junis, and the current holders of the best record in the AL Central, are going to host the reigning American League champs, the Tampa Bay Rays, led by Michael Walker. So as of right now, that is what the MLB is looking like as we as we ease into as we transition into today's games. And then last but not least, taking a glance of what's going on in the world of soccer, because yesterday was Tuesday, um, so and we are coming towards the end of the season, so you're going to see a lot more midweek games this or at this time of the year. Starting off in the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich was able to beat Bayer Leverkusen 2 to nothing, scoring both of their goals in the first uh, 15 minutes. Their second goal will come from their elite German midfielder, Joshua Kimmich. 
uh, and with their two nothing win, they now are they they now hold a ten point lead over second place RB Leipzig in the German table after RB Leipzig uh, lost two to one to Cologne. Uh, so of course, big win for Bayern Munich moving forward as they currently sit ten points ahead of second place RB Leipzig with four more games left in their table. So with their next win, they very well could secure uh, the Bundesliga at this moment. So that's why that game was very big. And then jumping out to the Premier League, Chelsea faced off against Brighton and Hub Albion. And after neither team was able to score, this would result in a draw. Looking at where Chelsea sits after this draw, they currently hold the they are currently holding on to the fourth best record in the Premier League, as they are tied with fifth place West Ham, but West Ham United, but they are leading on goal differential. They currently sit one point behind third place Leicester City, who's also who's played one less game than them at the moment. So that's currently where Chelsea sits. So of course uh, that that was a very important game, and I guess it's be- it's good for them that they didn't lose it. Looking forward to what's going on today. Starting in the Premier League at 1 o'clock, Tottenham Hotspur will host Southampton. Tottenham Hotspur hold the seventh best record in the English Premier League as they currently sit three points behind sixth place Liverpool out of Europa League contention at the moment. So a win here could be very, uh, or at least temporarily, it could put them ahead of Liverpool, especially if they win because they already have a higher goal differential. And then at 3.15, Aston Villa will host Manchester City. Manchester City is the best record in the in, in, in the Premier League. A win here could put Manchester City up temporarily by 11 points with six games left to play on the table as Manchester United is inching closer and closer, but a win here could keep them at, at arm's length. Could keep Manchester City at arm's length, I mean. And then looking at the Bundesliga, Borussia Dortmund will host Union Berlin as Borussia Dortmund looks to fight for a Champions League spot. Right now they sit five points behind Wolfsburg. Um, A win here could go a long way for them as Wolfsburg will face off against VfB Stuttgart today. And then looking out to Italian Serie A, AC Milan will host Sassuolo. Looking at where AC Milan sits in the table, they sit nine points behind Inter Milan um, right now in that second spot. So a win for them would be important. Uh, Juventus will host Parma at 2.45 on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Juventus currently holds on to the fourth best record in Serie A as they sit two points behind third place Atalanta and fit in two points ahead of fifth place Napoli. So a win here would be very important for Juventus. And then Inter Milan will face off against Spezia on ESPN Plus at the same time. Inter Milan currently holds the best record in Serie A as they sit nine points ahead of AC Milan. So a win here could be very important for their title run. Um, and then looking out to La Liga, Real Madrid will face off against Cadiz at four o'clock. Real Madrid is the only team of the big three that's facing off today. Looking at where they sit in La Liga, they sit three points behind first place Atletico Madrid and they sit two points ahead of Barcelona. A win here could temporarily put them on par with points for Atletico Madrid. So the pressure is most definitely um, high for Real Madrid as they most definitely have a chance to pull away with this win. And then really quickly looking out out to France in the French Coupe de France in the quarterfinals. Uh, it looks as though Kylian Mbappe and PSG will face off against Angers. And then Lyon and Lyon will face off against Monaco. Those are three of the top four teams in France facing off in their in one of their domestic leagues. And as of right now, that is what the that is what the world of soccer is looking like. That is what all of sports are looking like today. As today is Wednesday, April twenty first, two thousand twenty one out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims and I want to thank everyone for listening to all fifty two minutes of this piece. I hope all is well and once all of these exhibitions are finished, I will come back to you tomorrow, Thursday, April twenty second um for tomorrow's or to give you a rundown of today's matchups i want to thank you once again i hope all is well and i'll catch you tomorrow i'm james sims this is the elite and once again today is wednesday april 21st 2001 out here in this quarantine Uh, thanks for listening to this piece and peace out